Hey guys, it's Lauren from tastebetterfromscratch.com where I share easy to make recipes that are all made from scratch. There's nothing wrong with a box cake mix, but I'm here to tell you making a cake from scratch in your home is so easy to do and the taste is incomparable. We're just using the recipe from the back of the Hershey's Cocoa Box. It's the Hershey's Perfectly Chocolate Cake. I think it's well named because it really is perfect and I have a few extra tips to take it over the top. Let's get started. The first thing we're gonna do is prep our cake pans because this really is the key to success. We wanna be able to release this cake with no problems. That'll really make, make or break your efforts at the end when the cake is baked. So what I'm doing is just placing parchment paper at the bottom of the pan. You can buy these pre-cut parchment rounds. You could grab a piece of parchment paper and trace it out yourself and cut your own circle to fit the pan, um, whatever works best. You could do the old fashioned way with just greasing and flouring the pan. I think this is easier and I think it works better. So we're gonna put our parchment paper in the bottom of the pans. We're gonna grab some nonstick cooking spray and just lightly spray the edges in the center of the pan. This will help keep our cake from sticking. Grab your mixing bowl. You guys can use a stand mixer. I'm just gonna use a mixing bowl with electric beaters, but you could beat it by hand by, as well. We're gonna start off with our dry ingredients. Okay, we're gonna need one and three-fourths cup of flour. I always add an extra two tablespoons of flour. I found that it really helps the cake rise a little bit better. And if you're at high altitude, you could add even an extra tablespoon. Two cups of sugar. Three-fourths cup of cocoa powder. We're using the Hershey's cocoa powder for our Hershey's perfect chocolate cake. And then you'll need one and a half teaspoons each of baking soda and baking powder. And lastly, a little bit of salt. Okay, we'll stir our dry ingredients together. Get everything nice and evenly incorporated in our bowl. You could sift your cocoa powder if you need to to get any big lumps out. All right, we're ready to add our wet ingredients. We're gonna start with buttermilk. The original recipe actually calls for milk. We're using buttermilk because I found that it just makes the cake even more moist and rich. So we're gonna add our buttermilk. I have a recipe for this on my site. It's super simple substitute with milk and vinegar or lemon juice. If you don't have buttermilk on hand, no problem. You can use that too. All right, once we add our buttermilk, we're gonna add a half a cup of oil. We're adding two eggs, and the key with baking is to use room temperature ingredients. So you could throw your eggs in a cup of warm water for a couple minutes before using them. Room temperature eggs are gonna be bigger and fluffier, and they'll emulsify in the batter a little bit better as you're mixing it. All right, crack our second egg. Next, we're adding our vanilla extract. I'm using homemade vanilla extract, which is super easy to make. I'll link the recipe in the description below. Um, using good quality real vanilla extract is gonna be really important in the awesome flavor of this cake. So we're gonna add two teaspoons of vanilla. Okay, we're gonna give this a good mix with our hand mixer. You could use a wooden spoon if you want to. I love how simple this recipe is to make. It comes together really quickly. I just poured in the boiling water. We're gonna slowly mix it in until the batter is super silky smooth. And it's gonna be really thin. Have a little faith, it's gonna turn out beautiful. Okay, we've mixed everything together. Our batter is ready to go and pour into these pans that we prepared earlier. We're just gonna eyeball it, divide the batter between these pans evenly. That's it for this step. All we have to do now is put them in the oven. Oh my goodness, these smell amazing. They've cooked beautifully. You can see how full and nice and flat they are. Um, a good easy way to test if they're done is touch the top. If it springs back gently, you know it's done. Or you can use the handy toothpick test, stick it into the center, and if it comes out clean, it's done. So we're gonna let these cool in the pans for about 10 minutes before we turn them out onto a cooling rack. Okay, we've let them cool for about 10 minutes. So let's get them out of the pans. I like to run a knife just along the edge of the cake pan to make sure and release the edges. We don't want anything sticking. A good trick is to take your cooling rack, put it on top of the cake, and then we're gonna flip it all together. Super easy. Pull it off and there it is. 
That's why I love using parchment paper. It comes out really easily, especially when you release the edges of the cake with the knife. So now all we have to do is gently peel off this parchment paper and we'll let it finish cooling completely on the wire rack until it's time to frost the cake. I know baking can seem really intimidating, but hopefully with these little tricks like using parchment paper at the bottom of the pan, you understand how easy this can be. It really is really easy. All right, we're gonna let these cakes cool completely and we've got my favorite part to work on in the meantime, which is the frosting. We're gonna start off with some melted butter and cocoa powder. We're gonna mix those two together first. I love using melted butter for the same reason I love using the boiling water in the cake. It helps to bloom the cocoa. It just gives it a richer chocolate flavor. Okay, we just mixed our melted butter and cocoa powder. Now we're gonna add some powdered sugar and milk. The great thing about frosting is that it's super forgiving. You can add powdered sugar and milk until you get the consistency that you like. We're gonna add about three cups of powdered sugar and one third cup of milk and then a little splash of vanilla. So I like to add a little bit of the powdered sugar and a little of the milk and we'll start with that. I always like to use milk that's a little bit warm. If you use really cold milk, it can congeal the butter and you'd end up with little chunks of butter in your frosting. So I've warmed this milk just a little bit. And you can really use milk, cream, evaporated milk, whatever you have on hand. Now the frosting looks just about perfect. It's the perfect consistency I want. It's thick enough to frost the cake. It's not runny, it's not too thick. Oh my goodness, it looks and smells amazing. This is why I never buy canned store-bought frosting because one taste of this and you'll never go back. So good. All right, we've got our cooled cakes, we've got our frosting, and now is the fun part, we're gonna frost this cake. All right, I've got my cake stand. You could just use a regular plate if you want, whatever you want to serve your cake on. So we're gonna take our first cake round and I like to flip it down so that the flat bottom is facing up. We're gonna add a nice thick center layer of frosting onto this cake. So go ahead and take a good few big scoops of frosting. Everybody likes a good layer of frosting in the middle of their cake. I'm using an offset spatula, which is really great for decorating cakes and frosting. Um, whatever you have at home will work. We're ready to stack our second cake on. So we can do this one with the flat side down. So we've got the two flat edges together. All right, let's add our, some more frosting onto this giant chocolate sandwich we have here. And then I just like it to slowly drop down the sides and I'll smooth it all out. Now we're gonna slowly carry it down the sides. And it's okay if you get some on the cake plate, you can always wipe it off later. The reason I am decorating this so simply is because I don't want it to be intimidating. This is really easy to do. I love the natural rustic look of the frosting, just kind of messy and imperfect because what we care about is the taste. This is gonna taste amazing. Now the frosting is finished. It is the moment of truth. We are gonna cut this cake. All right, so I start at the center of the cake, make a nice clean cut. I always like to wipe off my knife after each cut just to make sure it's nice and clean for a good clean cut. Oh, here we go. Oh, first slice coming out. Oh, that looks amazing. Look how perfect it looks. So nice and moist. How lucky am I to get the first slice? Got a good bite with frosting, it's my favorite part. Oh my gosh, this really is the perfect chocolate cake. It was so good, that rich chocolate flavor, the frosting, this is killer. Thanks for watching, chocolate lovers. You can find the full recipe for this chocolate cake in the video description. If you like this video, give me a thumbs up below and subscribe, hit the notification bell so you don't miss any of my new future recipes. We'll see you next time.